Welcome back to Raid Guides in a Trench Coat featuring the Grasp of Avarice, the quest for the One Piece! A million deaths are not enough for Master Rahul, but even our least favorite Crypt Dark deserves a little snack from time to time. Those bird dead transits aren't going to bake themselves. The Grasp of Avarice is a dungeon filled with so much bullshit that it makes dairy farms look clean by comparison. Now, I wouldn't normally describe every tiny little segment of the path between encounters in painstaking detail, but the stretch leading up to the first encounter has more white mechanics than the toilet paper quality assurance team. We were all born onto this earth to shit, but only LFG forces us to wipe. So the whole mechanic of this dungeon has to do with these fake exotic engrams feed the defunct Forsaken campaign. Killing adds drops these little explosive nuggets which can be picked up to grant stacks of the Suffering from Success debuff. To progress, you and your buddies will need to wank that debuff to charge the J.O. crystals hidden around the map. Not even a million nuts are enough for Master Rahul. I promise I don't go into these video scripts aiming to make jokes about dicks, but they're easy and that one kind of wrote itself. Now the only low-hanging fruit I think I have left is cock and ball torture, but there's no way I managed to shoehorn that into this video. In any case, the only other thing to know about this debuff is that if you get backed up and don't remove the debuff, then you'll die. Oh, and if you get 10 stacks it recharges your super, which also seems like a pretty important feature. Once you fall into the pit created by the first crystal, you'll follow a pretty linear pathing until you get into this room. You'll take the second door and not the first, you'll jump up onto the desk to avoid getting skewered by this pressure plate, and then you'll flick the lever and avoid the pressure plate on the way back out. Now this big circular door is open, you'll go through the pipeline and jump up onto these platforms that will only remain stable for about as long as Kanye stays out of scandal. Avoid the glowing lever and instead go to the one hiding in the nook beneath the platforms, then make your way back into the first room. From there, jump up to these fan reservoirs. Thanks to the eager edge griefing fuck asses, the first fan reservoir trap can't kill you anymore, so at least something good came out of that, but the correct way forward is up to the third fan reservoir. After narrowly avoiding a pressure plate that only gets you the first time because you can't see it while jumping up, sprint across more of the rapidly falling floor pieces and into this clusterfuck of a room. There's going to be a lot of jumping back and forth here. Cross the bridge here, flip this lever, jump across the moat to this other upturned door, flip the lever in there, don't get skewered in either room, and then jump over to this control panel here. This just closes the door on you, so you'll actually have to jump up to hit this control panel. Now, remember that this dungeon came out before Witch Queen and didn't account for the use of Strand. So, bypass all the mechanics you're supposed to do and make a beeline for the massive door that opened on the far side. Flip the switch, wait for your grenade to recharge, and then grapple your way to the end. Once again, this door, and not this door. One more room where you'll be jumping back and forth, killing witches and flipping bitches until you find this pocket of fallen. Now, Grasp of Avarice's mom let him have two wieners, and by wieners I mean mechanics. On top of the trickster's piss grams, you'll also get scorch cannons. Now, I don't know how many of you know how to actually use a scorch cannon, because I sure as fuck didn't before this dungeon, but turns out, instead of jumping and spamming your shoot button like in Team Scorched, if you hold the trigger, your fireball will stick to your target and get bigger, which will allow you to do more damage. As far as the mechanic is concerned, there are these devices that look like they may contain over 70 alternative Twitter accounts. Sorry, 70 alternative X accounts. I really hope that that joke ages well. Shoot your Scorch Cannon into the egg, charge it up, and then release your trigger to trigger whatever mechanic it's attached to. Usually, a door. In the instance of this door, you'll want to stand to the side and let the less experienced players go first. The Fallen like their percussion and drummed up one final trap for you. But after that, it's all smooth sailing so long as you don't spend a full five minutes looking for this hole in the ceiling. Take a few more turns and then arrive at where the real fun begins. The first boss of the dungeon forces you to put together everything you've learned up to this point, as is customary. On the far side of the arena, a small task force of Fallen will drop in alongside a Fallen Vandal that has a Scorch Cannon. You'll need to rip the Scorch Cannon from its cold flailing limbs while avoiding the purple searchlight that the Ogre will be trying to shine on you. With the cannon in your possession, aim up towards the egg machine suspended above the roll doors and use your click and hold move to open the Hive Garage. Once inside, all the ads that spawn will drop the tricks or piss grams, adding up to a total of around 15 if you can get them all. In order to start the damage phase, you'll need like 25, which means you'll have to go to both the garage sale and Anakin your way through the lemonade stand to scrounge up enough stacks to charge the crystal. 
After the crystal gets all of the stacks that it needs, it'll make a little sound and then the ogre's shield will go down. It's worth noting that before you try to engage, you should make sure you don't have any extra stacks lingering on you because nothing will expedite your health bar to zero, quite like one residual stack while you're on the opposite side of the arena without any trash mobs to reset your timer on. Fire off your ammo while avoiding getting ogred by the laser, and then depending on how closely you've been following the weapon meta in the patch notes, you'll either one phase it with your team or solo your way through at least seven damage phases while the game absolutely refuses to give you anything other than lime flavored ammo packs. Immediately after that ogre encounter, you'll jump through a few hallways and then come up to two panels. If you go to the wrong one, you'll die. If you go to the correct one, you'll start the sparrow encounter. I really want to know if there was a way to solve this besides telling your friend, hey, dare you to touch it first. Anyhow, with the doors open, you'll be immediately greeted with fallen mines and a horde of projectiles aimed right at your sparrow. If you haven't managed to get the always on time sparrow, you'll want to pick a fast food mascot to pray to because your ass is about to be lit up like you just had half a dozen Taco Bell volcano burritos. <laughs> In any case, there are four mines to disable, and most of them are on a time limit short enough that there's no way in hell you'll reach it before it goes off. In order to mitigate this, there are buttons that are poorly hidden along the path that will extend the mine's timer if hit. These will be essential to hit if you're doing this solo, but in a full fire team, your chances of getting at least one of your teammates to push it will leave you with a higher chance of success. To dismantle the mine, you must drive through it. Yes? With all the mines disabled, you'll now be only a hop, skip, and a jump away from the second encounter. Every good pirate crew needs a navigator, if not for the obvious reasons, then for the use of their spyglass because that's the only way you're going to find anything in this fucking encounter. This next encounter is going to require you to break four shield points on this big suspended dome by launching the battered husks of servitors at them via cannon. Except someone alerted all these small indigenous villages that the light bearer Christopher Columbus was on his way, so they're all bunkering down like an American classroom after some team loses the Super Bowl. It may come as a surprise, but at least one team does in fact always have to lose. You'll have to navigate your way around all these outposts until you find the singular one that has enemies running around it. Use the Scorch Cannons to power the big cannons, which you'll need to aim towards one of the islands lest you launch yourself right into the extremely lethal shallow waters. Once surrounded by hostile fallen, steal their pissgrams like before. They've got an invulnerable servitor, and the only way to lower its shield is to fill up the crystals hidden away in the building. With the crystal charge, cock your guns and torture that ball until its crumpled husk starts pulsing relentlessly. Kick it down the hill like it's a cheese wheel, and then line up the cannon with one of the metallic bed sores around the rim of the central device. After that, you'll just rinse and repeat. Spend three minutes trying to find the servitor, kill its friends, charge the crystal, and use its body as ammunition until the last of the metal tumors are destroyed and all of the cannons will automatically aim themselves down to the central platform. From there, it's just your loot chest, and then one more cannon to infiltrate the final boss arena. Captain Avarot can be an absolute pain in the ass if you aren't totally prepared. And it's not really even him that's the problem, it's his two stupid crew members. Pirate pun and grip sacks. The goal of this encounter is the same as the last two. Gather some exotic engrams and use them to charge the central crystal to drop the shield and damage the boss. The first change, however, is that for the first time, the ads are not the ones dropping the engrams. Like any half-competent Gambit player, the Fallen Dregs have decided it's better to bank their moats rather than run around with a full inventory while there's an invader on the loose. Rest in peace, Gambit. Instead, you'll have to pry open their storage boxes by use of the Scorch Cannon and Eggs, which are all mounted in the air around the central section of the arena. Once activated, shipping containers will fly up into the sky and shower golden engrams all over the arena. There's also been a lot of red in those piss grams, which somebody somewhere should probably get checked out. In total, 30 engrams will drop. As a team of three, it should be absolutely free to grab all 30 unless some fall down into the toxic shallow waters with a really, really liberal kill plane. With the same caveat, it also shouldn't be too bad to do so with two people. If you start up on either side, you should both be able to meet in the middle and still grab everything. As a solo player, just grab what you can. The absolutely obscene number of damage phases you'll end up doing will make these engram phases near indistinguishable as you slog through and you're going to fuck up your math at least once and overcommit with only 58 engrams in the crystal. Oh yeah, you need a whopping 60 engrams to start the damage phase this time. Back to the boss's goons, our matey is the trace shank with RM0 chill. He hits like a truck and has the health pool the size of Ido's death flags. Grimshanks, on the other hand, you need a fucking magnifying glass for because the bastard's playing Where's Waldo while being constantly invisible, only to jump on your dropped engrams like Amanda Holiday onto the grenade of plot holes created by Lightfall's Neon Core reimagining. Killing Grimshanks will also net you a nice pile of engrams, so make sure that you're standing nearby and not in a position where you'll get curb stomped by the boss. 
I recommend dealing with both of these crew members before you even think about grabbing the Scorch Cannons. But beyond that, it's as simple as deposit the engrams without getting boss stomped and then hit the boss until he dies. And that's it. Congrats. You've completed the Grasp of Avarice. No chance it is under an exotic. Haven't you already taken enough? Go watch a real guide.